big big story out of Australia. You're the Australia expert. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, we all know Australia kind of belongs to China. But no, quite seriously, this is huge. A uh, massive money laundering ring has been busted uh, in Australia. Huge. And to ten billion dollars worth or something? It's a huge, like Massive. hundred, yeah, yeah, hundred billion. Big. Like I got it, I got it. You got to bring up the actual amount. But basically, um, they were operating a uh, operating a shadow bank um, kind of operation yeah. in China, and they were money laundering for corrupt officials in China, ten criminals. Billion. Ten billion. Yeah. Ten billion dollars worth, um, and of course, operating through casinos and the yeah. usual thing, like what they do in Canada. By the way. Canada, it's your turn to bust the crime rings because it's bigger in Canada. Yeah, it is bigger it's than It's way bigger yeah. in Canada. Like, it's been like that for decades it's wild, now. wild, dude, especially uh, uh, Vancouver area. Yeah. yeah, through the casinos and whatnot. Yeah. There. You know it's happening in Canada. Stop. I know you're still like, oh, good, it's good for the economy or something. Stop. Go bust these guys. So anyway, there is, a, there is something that I would like to just talk about when it comes to this because... One of the ways that these money laundering operations work is they buy up real estate. Yep. Okay. Now, you might think, okay, whatever, they're buying up real estate. But no, there are certain areas in the world right now where it's just absurd. Yeah. Like Vancouver is a good example. Where a house that's probably should cost like, I don't know, $50,000 costs $3.8 million. Yes. Okay, certain neighborhoods are just not possible for the average person, the average citizen of that country to ever right. afford to live in. And the reason is, is because these organized crime rings running out of China, getting all of the dirty money from the corrupt officials and from criminals and so on. CCP. Yeah, are buying up all the real estate and driving the prices up and destroying neighborhoods. These criminal organizations are having a knock-on effect that affect you. Yep. And affect your family and affect the the ability of your children to be able to afford housing and so on and so forth. And that's why it's so important for these Chinese organized crime rings to be busted and bought. I mean, they're literally funded by the Chinese yeah. government. I mean, they are. That's how you can hone in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll just... Um, Read the key points here. Australian federal police have charged nine people after smashing an alleged Chinese-Australian money laundering syndicate. The group alleged, allegedly moved an estimated $10 billion out of Australia while amassing a blue-trip property portfolio in Sydney. Police have seized properties and luxury assets worth at least $150 million. Two of the charged suspects are allegedly Chinese-Australian gangsters in Sydney with a combined personal fortune estimate of over $1 billion. The pair are accused of accumulating wealth by becoming uh, the Australian-based bankers of choice for international drug cartels and wealthy Chinese nationals seeking to circumvent China's capital flight laws. I mean, how did that even get to that point? It's ridiculous. I mean, they were buying, they bought up like a huge swath of land near yeah. Sydney's second international airport. Yes. Massive, like yeah. 300 hectares or whatever yeah. it was, like a huge piece of land. Huge. They're buying up the local land, they're buying up the local real estate, and they're yep. using this basically to... Uh, launder money and they're yep. driving around in the fanciest cars with stupid you know st- watches that cost like millions of dollars or whatever you know just stupid stuff like that anyway huge bust it is a huge bust and um, it's something that quite honestly you need to look into Canada Australia's struck first it's your chance it's your chance to do it you can do redeem it redeem yourself Canada it's <laughs> do it do We're it waiting. for everyone. Yes. Do it. You know what? Do it mostly for the marginalized Chinese immigrants that ran away from China that and now feel hard. threatened because yes. they can't afford a house mm-hmm. and they get targeted by CCP agents. And they've got the bloody there. Chinese yeah. mafia on their back, on their doorstep. back doorstep. You know? Deal with it. Deal with it. Dismantle this smuggling ring. Dismantle yeah. this CCP money laundering. Uh, you know, Ridiculous. enterprise, this international thing. Get rid of it. Canada, it's your turn. So uh, a little follow-up on my on my video of the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what happened after the protests. We know that potentially thousands and thousands of protesters were disappeared, reached out to a lot of people, couldn't get a hold of anyone that we knew joined the protest. This was yeah. a public one that people wanted to put the feelers out because she had a lot of influence, right? Yeah. Uh, disappeared white paper protester Ho Jin Yi. She called for her colleagues to go to Liang Ma Bridge in Beijing to protest and spread uh, many posters. She was working at KPMG at the time. Police spread out, put on the international press pressure on the police. Um, mm-hmm. She had studied abroad, um, so there is one that we can uh, that people are calling for political pressure. Uh, yeah, so she's like, she's another she's disappeared. Alive. Yeah, we need we need one proof. of many many yeah, many many. Of many. course. So here's another one that's gone missing. Yep. Just keep your eyes out. This is insane. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> please enlighten everyone. This is insane. Um, 
the conversation doesn't really matter here, but basically, well, it says everyone look, I found something big. Mm -hmm. But the reason that this is so interesting is down below, you see where the circle is? Yes. The comment there says like, um, if you have a, a country, then you have a home. And yes. that's that's like Chinese, typical yeah. Chinese banner propaganda. Yeah. Um, and it, the, the person's calling the person a traitor. Yes. Right? So he says, Han Jian Men, Yo Guo, Yo Guo, Yo Jia. So that means like, yeah, he, again, if you have, yeah, it's Hayo Jia. If mm -hmm. you have a, a country, then you have a home. And it's it's like this kind of Xi Jinping type propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's been around since Mao's time. But anyway, the whole point of this is not the conversation. Yes. The whole point is this is a Wu Mao, right? Yes. And it's a Wu Mao that is obviously participating in a Weibo conversation to steer the conversation and make people gang up on the supposed traitor. Sure. Right? Someone that's sure. maybe saying something negative about the CCP. Yeah. Now, why would I point out a Wu Mao like this? Well, it's a very, very important feature of this Yeah, the location. It's the location, which says Shenyang City, mm -hmm. right? And then it says Laogai Nongchang, which is literally a forced labor reform camp. Yep. And this is what they do. When you're talking to a Wu Mao or a paid internet troll that's sticking up for the CCP or trying to steer conversation away from criticizing it, you are potentially many times talking to somebody in a prison in a forced labor camp. And this is the work they have to do in yes. the prison. Yes. Like they're reformed. They're being forced to go. Probably should have turned off the location. Yeah, exactly. CCP, if you're going to force your prisoners. You know. I mean, it, there's, there's a wide network of these internet trolls. You know, the kind of people that attack us on Twitter and yep. leave nasty comments down below, yep. even in our live chat right now. Yep. Um, first of all, you get the volunteer yeah. nationalists who are just super nationalists, ultra nationalists. They'll do anything to defend the honor of China and sure. the CCP. You get them. Then you get the paid ones that actually work for the Chinese government. They sit or, in an office. Or not paid. Yeah, or yeah. not paid. No, I'm saying you get the paid ones that yeah. actually sit in an office and they've yes. got their equipment and they've been given their directive to do this and they get a salary. Yeah. And then you get the forced labor ones yeah. like this dude <laughs> this who basically are in thing. prison being told yeah. like instead of like, I don't know, breaking rocks with a, with a sledgehammer. Which they do. Yeah, they do that too. But instead of that kind of hard labor, they sit there and they have to like leave patriotic comments on yep. the, online. Yeah. Cut out, guys. Cut it's ridiculous. Out. Forced labor internet trolls. What a time to be alive. I know, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't feed the trolls is something they take literally over there. Feed them with food. No, no, they don't feed them because they starve they them. They don't feed them. They give I'm them a few grains of food. rice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>